The LA Clippers bounce back in their second summer league game with a 100 to 90 victory over the Sacramento Kings. Actually, no, it was an 80 to 70 victory. Jesus, I was 20 points off. It was a defensive slugfest, and the Clippers came out on top. Going to be talking about what stood out in this one, starting with the Clippers' second-year man out of Michigan, Musa Diabate. Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Viziri, born and raised in Los Angeles and going into my 19th season as a Clipper fan this fall. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. And of course, subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more NBA, NBA history, and LA sports content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to comment what you thought of our second summer league game. First one, obviously, a loss to the Utah Jazz. But this one, a bounce-back victory over the Sacramento Kings. Basically, a wire-to-wire victory. We were really up the large majority of the game. The Sacramento Kings made a late push, or as I like to say sometimes, the fake run. But we were able to withstand it and finish the job and go one-on-one in these first two games in Vegas. And in this episode, the three things I've highlighted to talk about are Musa Diabate and his defensive activity. And then Jason Preston and Xavier Moon, the differences between the two, who I feel like could be the better player right now. And then the new guys, Kobe Brown, Jordan Miller, talking about how they did in their second games as Clipper players in this summer league campaign. But let's start out with talking about Musa. And it was just instantaneous how impactful this guy was on defensive end. I mean... I am not exaggerating when I say this, and I want to preface by saying that I have not watched that much Summer League in my life. It has not been a thing that I have, you know, set in my calendar to watch, and I watch it yearly with excitement and whatnot, but that was the best defensive half, the first half, I've ever seen from any player in Summer League. Musa Diabate defended in just about every single way you could imagine. Switching onto the perimeter, guarding in the post and stealing the ball, pulling the chair from somebody, protecting the rim, contesting shots and forcing guys to miss just because his wingspan is so long and they're afraid he's going to block them. I mean, the guy was absolutely everywhere, even in the passing lanes a little bit, and his rebounding was great as well. I mean, to have a guy, and we saw this last year, but now you're seeing it a little bit more, and maybe, you know, he's improved a little bit as well. It's his second season now. But his lateral ability at his size, his defensive instincts are just fantastic. And he was literally everywhere in this game. I counted five times where guys tried to go at him in the first quarter. Five times they ended up scoreless. Some of them didn't even get a shot off. Blocking shots around the rim, or I should say affecting shots around the rim. I think he only got one block. But his defensive activity and versatility really just jumped off the page. Now, the problem with Musa is, as I mentioned in the last episode, is his offensive touch is still not there at all. He showed some moments, though, I will say, of bringing the ball up in this game, and I was really impressed by it. There was one time where he went behind his back coming up the court, so he's got a pretty decent handle for a big, but his finishing, I mean, again, a couple of times, caught the ball in the post, around the basket, and he's definitely not finishing through traffic, but even sometimes one-on-one, missing little jump hooks and just shots around the basket. And again, it's his touch that really needs some work. In this game, he only had, he actually didn't even finish with a field goal. That lets you know right then and there. Five points on 0 for 4 shooting. Five for 6 on the line though, so at least he shot better from the free throw line. But five points, nine rebounds, four assists, and then two steals and a block. So he's filling up the stat sheet in every single other category. The one that's lacking is points. But then again, that is the one thing he really needs to improve if he wants to set foot on an NBA floor during a game consistently. And not when I say set 
their feet on an NBA floor. I don't mean their feet on the sidelines on the bench on an NBA floor. I mean actually getting minutes. And that's something that just has gonna, is going to come with work. I think that's much easier to work on, though, your touch around the basket than your defensive abilities like that. Those are God-given that he has, that he can move his feet with the, with guards, that he has a long wingspan and long arms and a great second jump, so he's really affecting shots. And his defensive instincts, you know, the, the couple of times where I saw him try to get posted up and he was able to, you know, stay stationary, stand his ground, be strong, and then that was one time in that first quarter where he pulled the chair early on in the game and got a steal. I was pretty impressed by that. So... A lot of, lot of great things to take from Musa defensively in this game. And I'm really enjoying watching him play and just getting able to watch him for an extended stretch. But, um, yeah, it was very, very impressive. His defense was stellar. But offensively, still a lot to be desired. And that's something that we'll just have to keep an eye on and hopefully will improve over the years. But that's the reason why I still think, even with all this defensive raving I'm doing about him, that he's still not going to be getting real minutes for the Clippers this year. If he wants to be, though, or if the Clippers want him as that third big just in case Zoo or Plumlee go down, I think that's absolutely an option. Obviously, we know Ty Lue likes to lean small ball, so he might even be resistant to go to that. But there are just some times where you need another big out there, where you're getting crushed on the inside or something. But anyway, that's my report on Musa. I think he's been awesome, and he was really awesome defensively in this game. And as for the Clippers as a team, we kind of fed off that defensive intensity. And it wasn't just Musa Diabate. Everyone was competing at such a high level defensively from the jump. You could see it on the first or second defensive possession. The Sacramento Kings swung the ball beautifully, but they had no open shots because the Clippers were flying out to the perimeter, running guys off the line, rotating beautifully, and making the Kings go to option C, D, E, F until the shot clock ran out. And that is something you love to see. That's Jordan Miller involved. That's Jason Preston involved. Everybody. And the Clippers held the Kings to just 37% shooting and 34% from three in the game. And get this. In the second quarter, they only allowed nine points. They led by only one point at the end of the first quarter, 17-16. But it was really the second quarter which gave them the lead and they never really looked back after that. A 27-9 second quarter in favor of your LA Clippers. The largest lead of the game, actually, they don't even show that statistic on the ESPN app, so I don't know how what the largest lead was for Sacramento, but we were up for the majority of the game. They made their little fake run. I will say our offense wasn't that great, though. It wasn't a very good offensive game by either team. Isaiah Thomas was really getting at it in commentary about how bad the offense was, but again, you have guys competing their hearts out which I love to watch. I'm always down to see guys compete, whether it's summer league, recreation, high school. I don't care. I want to see guys compete. I'd rather see lower level ball compete than guys just going through the motions like a lot of NBA games are, I'm sorry to say. So the summer league, I like, okay, it doesn't have as much skill, but I really do like how everyone's working to get a spot and the effort level is super high and you saw that defensively when you have NBA athletes defending, but you don't necessarily have the skill of an NBA game offensively throughout. It leads to sometimes 80, 70 games. And of course, it is a 40-minute game and not a 48-minute game. But Clippers shot 41% from the field, so not that great themselves. And another game where they didn't shoot very well from three, just 36% on nine for 25 from outside. So those are the stats there. But overall, the Clippers win it with basically a wire-to-wire -wire win, 80-70. to 70. But coming up, going to be talking about the two point guards, Jason Preston, Xavier Moon, things I saw and things. Who was really the better player? Because I was raving about Preston last game, but through two games, it's definitely Xavier Moon, who you can argue hasn't just been our best player in one game, but maybe our best player overall. Going to be talking about that coming up. Let me tell you a little something about Ibotta. Finally taking that summer vacation you've been, you've been planning, but dreading buying all of the necessities before you take off, it's time to stop spending your hard-earned money without getting anything in return. Enter Ibotta. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta. 
by using the code LOCKED when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code LOCKED. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED. Thanks for making Locked On Clippers your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. Going to be talking about the in-season tournament, explaining what it is and what the Clippers group means. So I know a lot of people are wondering what this in-season tournament is. I will be giving a nice breakdown on the Wednesday episode, so stay tuned for that. But let's get back into the summer league game where the Clippers won 80-70 to to go 1-1 one and one in their summer league campaign thus far. And in this game, the Clippers played... A nine-man rotation with Bryson Williams, Matt Morgan, Broderick Thomas, and Bowden was the ninth guy. And that Bowden guy, I got to mention him right now, he was lights out from three. I think he was on the Long Island Nets. He spent some time in the G League. But 18 points in 17 minutes on seven for nine shooting and four for six from three, I mean, he was splashing. So I was pretty impressed by him. Um, and then Matt Morgan guy is pretty good as well. He's like a combo guard who can play off ball or on ball, but he's got, he's the size of a point guard and he's got some really good burst off the bounce and he seems pretty fearless as well. A guy that's played, as I said, last episode in France. And in this game, he had 10 points on three for eight shooting and again, shot two for six from three. So he's shooting only 33% from three thus far in the summer league, but he's made four threes for us, which is probably more than a lot of the guys on our squad so far. But let's talk about the two point guards, right? Jason Preston and Xavier Moon. So Jason Preston played more last season. He was obviously drafted by the Clippers out of Ohio. And I said in the last episode that Jason Preston is the second best passer on the team. Now, I haven't checked the comments of that video. I assume there was some pushback. But after watching another game, I am even more confident in my take. The problem is it doesn't really matter unless he does the other things that I mentioned that he was lacking. And that is, he does not drive to score. He drives to pass. He's looking to pass, and the defense can see it. They can see that he's not super confident in his scoring ability. They can see that he's not the quickest in the world. They can see he doesn't elevate very much at the rim. So they all know to stay home on shooters. Now, then again, not really, because at times, these guys, inexperienced, basic principles are get prepared for the drive, take one step off your man, and then recover. But Jason Preston knows that the second he puts the ball on the floor, if you come cheat over, he's ready to pass because he's already looking to do it, almost predetermined before he even looks to drive. And granted, he was finding guys for a lot of threes, but sometimes when you do that, and again, I can really relate to this because this is one of my biggest flaws as a kid growing up hooping, is, and I know that sounds stupid because I didn't play at the professional level, but you can really relate. You really can. Because it's still basketball at the end. It's all relative. But driving in the basket, right? Sometimes you get a step on your defender, especially when there are refs involved. You got to keep going. If a guy hand checks you to get back in front, well, hopefully the ref will call a foul for you. Okay. If they just get back in front, they get back in front. But you also got to be ready to get your shoulder into them and protect them from getting back around. You know, you get the step and you got a guy on your hip. You got to make sure you are being the initiator of the contact and not letting him just bully you and get back in front. Now, of course, a lot of times when you get a step on somebody, the way they get back in front is by hand checking, by slowing you down on your drive by using their hand to kind of impede your progress. And again, with refs, you really got to test out and make the ref call those fouls because again, it's bump, bump, bump when the guy on your hip, a lot of times in actual NBA games, they will call that foul. But Jason Preston, he's looked a little bit hesitant to do it. So it's not just burst and, and you know, elevation you need to be confident try to go to the basket put pressure on the refs and when you do that when you actually look to drive and look to turn that corner then you'll get a real commitment from a help defender that will leave your teammate open what was happening in this game was they were just taking a step towards Preston and then he would pass but then the the player he's passing to still has to do work yeah they can work quickly off the catch and their defender is kind of recovering so they can get a step and turn the corner but it's still ma- basically making that player do more work. Even if Jason Preston gets an assist there, it's more about the bucket that's a little more self-created than the assist would like to lead on. And that is from not fully attracting two defenders. Now, one thing I also noticed about Jason in this game, they're switching a lot, right? Both teams are. And he's not able or even attempting to try to drive by bigs. 
So he clearly is showing that he doesn't have much burst and he's not confident in it at all. So that's one thing that can really hold him back at this level. Because the NBA, the athletes are only going to get better when he plays against the actual NBA competition. Now, granted, the athleticism is actually the thing that I think is most translatable that he's playing against right now. Because all these guys are stud athletes. They're all young and damn near in their athletic primes. But obviously, the other things are lacking. However, Jason Preston, I mean, against... I'm not going to act like these guys are better defenders than the NBA players. They're trying harder, and they are. a lot of them are NBA players, and they are very athletic. But it's not going to get easier, let's just put it that way, when the level increases. And Jason Preston, his problem is he needs to look to score. And somebody who did look to score and it made Preston look kind of bad, I'm not going to lie, is Xavier Moon, who... As I mentioned in the last episode, he does have good burst. He's fearless. He has great elevation on his jump shot, and he has a very good one as well. And his defensive tenacity is really good as well. I mean, in this game, Xavier Moon, again in the fourth quarter, he turned up. He had nine points in the fourth quarter at least. I counted nine, and I, I don't know if he had any more than that. But both games, he's been Mr. Fourth Quarter, hitting big shots. His first one was a contested pull over a much bigger defender, jump shot, 18-footer or something. Then he hit a three coming off a screen going to his left. I thought that was really impressive. And then he was in the high post of a zone. And by the way, the Clippers have played a lot of 2-3 zone defensively in these first two games uh, under Coach Dante Jones. But Xavier Moon was in the high post of our zone, caught the ball in the middle and shot a floater. And then another one where he went to the basket and scored. That was nine points right there. He finished with 18 points. He was our leading scorer for the second straight game. Actually tied with Bowden. As our leading scorer, six for 12 from the field, one for three from deep. So the only three he made was that one coming off the screen going to his left. But he also had five rebounds and six assists. So Xavier Moon, I thought he was really good. 18 points, five rebounds, six dimes on six for 12 shooting. So the answer to the question is, look, Xavier Moon's older than Jason Preston. Jason Preston's like 22. Xavier Moon is 28 so he's clearly had more experience just hooping and right now he looks like the better player he looks like he has more burst he doesn't look as good of a passer obviously i still believe preston is the second best passer on the team he threw this one pass left-handed across his body to the opposite corner in this game left hand across the body to the opposite corner how many players in the clipper roster can make that pass in a game i give you one maybe westbrook maybe I don't know if Bones can do it. Damn sure Paul George can't do it. And Kawhi Leonard, I doubt it as well. But it was incredible. I think Preston's an amazing passer. I think, but right now, it seems like he is only effective in pick and roll basketball because when teams will switch and make him go one on one, he doesn't really have much creation, doesn't really have a bag. Xavier Moon, though, is pretty shifty and he can elevate on a dime for a jump shot. The only thing is, he's a little small. But it, it's looking like right now, I would have Xavier Moon be the third string point guard for the Clippers. The thing is, Preston might have a little more upside because he's 22. He does have more upside, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Xavier Moon right now is really impressing me. And Jason Preston, I like what I see, but the fact that Matt Morgan was closing the game instead of him is not a good sign given that he's the one that's really on the team. So I want to see more from Preston. Anyway, but coming up, going to be talking about Kobe Brown and Jordan Miller to close it out. What did our rookies do in this one? All right, so to talk about the rookies, Kobe Brown and Jordan Miller, I thought they were pretty involved in this game. Kobe Brown got a lot of shots up. And so far, I like what I'm seeing defensively. It wasn't as standout as the first game for me, but he was still moving his feet pretty well. Of course, you can't really get mad at any of the Clippers from a defensive standpoint. The fact that they only allowed 70 points just showed that they were locked in as a team. So one thing I've noticed from all the players is that they are very much in tune to the team concept. Whether they're in zone or whether they're in man or they're switching in the pick and rolls or not switching, they seem like they know what they're doing. And that's important, following directions and being focused defensively. So Kobe Brown, obviously being a four-year college player, I mean... That stands out. Those guys are always more drilled with that kind of stuff. Another thing that stands out from players that spend multiple years in college, their off-ball movement. Their, his first basket was a beautiful baseline cut and a reverse dunk, throwing it, down, throwing it down with authority. The thing about Kobe Brown is, though, he's undersized to be a four in today's NBA, or in the NBA period, because these days they go smaller than ever. 
But even in today's small ball NBA, I still believe, even with the strength that he has, he is still undersized to be the second tallest guy out there. Unless the other team is going insanely small as well, his role will be a three in this league. And I think for that, he needs to show better consistency with the jump shot. I love the bully ball. I think he's a very good finisher around the rim. I can see that already. But he needs to shoot the ball better. In this game, 5 for 14 from the field. 1 for 6 from 3. So the first two games, he has not shot very well. Combined in the first two games, he has shot 9 for 25. That's 36%. That's not very good. 12 points, 8 rebounds, though. So the one thing I do like, and also 1 for 4 from the foul line. So that's not great either. I like his rebounding. I like how aggressive he is and his physicality. But right now, it looks like he's going to be spending a lot of time in the G League because he just doesn't have that shooting for an NBA wing that you want to have off the ball. And he doesn't... If, you, if you're not a great shooter, right, you better be an incredible defender. And I don't see incredible right now. I see very solid in the Summer League. He's not playing against the elite offensive players of the NBA. So it's not enough to really keep him on the court right now. And that's just me being brutally honest. But again, it's only two games. Let's keep watching. As for Jordan Miller... I like his size out there, his length, his athleticism. He had this really nice block playing help defense from behind on somebody. And I like his closeouts and everything as well. But other than that, he's not showing many redeeming qualities offensively. It's like a worse Amir Coffee right now for me. He had a nice mid-range where he caught the ball in the high post of the zone late in the game and scored. But I think he was two for eight or two for seven before that bucket. He finished three for eight from the field, only shot one three and was 0 for one. I do like that he turns the corner and gets by guys, but he doesn't seem to finish well in traffic right now against this NBA competition. And then again, he is everyone's getting used to playing against these athletes. This is still a level above college. These are all pros or guys that are close to going pro. These are all pros somewhere, whether it be in the NBA or somewhere else. These are professionals you're going against. So when he's driving to the basket, he is seeing bigger bodies than he saw at Miami. But six points, three rebounds, two assists, a steal and a block. That block is the one I mentioned just now. Three for eight from the field in 26 minutes. Not too great for my draft picks in this one, but defensively, I like what I'm seeing from both. If you're seeing something different, let me know. But right now, I'm not seeing anything that got too hyped on, personally. I like them. I'm rooting for them. But I'm not seeing anything to get too hyped on, personally. But overall, the more we see them play, the better. We got a game on Wednesday against Memphis. So it'll be really interesting to see them play against them. Um, But that's it for me in this one, guys. Musa's defense was an absolute standout. Go watch that first half again and let me know what you see from him. I thought he was incredible everywhere. And then Jason Preston and Xavier Moon. Jason Preston, amazing passer, but needs to look to score more and to drive to score. He did not really get two feet in the paint. His athleticism or lack of speed is really starting to show. Xavier Moon, on the other hand, is looking like he could be our third string point guard this upcoming season with the burst that he has and his clutch shooting. And the new guys, still not too sold on him. But, of course, rooting for them to be the best versions that they can be. Of course, also another thing that was cool about the game, we saw a couple of Clippers in attendance. Brandon Boston, Kenyon Martin Jr., Kenyon Martin Sr., Paul George, and Busy Bones Highland. Good to see the gentlemen supporting their fellow teammates. That's it for me today, guys, though. Let me know what you thought of the episode. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, LA Sports, and NBA history content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to tell me what you thought of the game. The age old proverb continues Go Clippers.